Welcome to section 4.2 on matrix operations. In this section, we're going to look at some different operations that we can perform with matrices. Just like you can perform operations on numbers, variables, expressions, polynomials, we can also perform some different mathematical operations on matrices. This section, we're going to focus on two of them. One is going to be addition and subtraction, and then the other will be what's called scalar multiplication. And I'm going to explain what that means when we get to it. But basically, matrices, you can multiply them two different ways. And in this section, we're going to focus on what is known as scalar multiplication. More on that in a bit. First, let's talk about addition and subtraction. So here's the first example. It's what's in your notes. So reading from left to right and top to bottom, the first matrix is a 2 by 2 square whose elements are negative 5, 3, 1, negative 4. And we're going to add to that a second square 2 by 2 matrix whose elements from left to right, top to bottom, 5, negative 4, 2, 5. Okay, so the key when you're adding and subtracting matrices is you're going to add or subtract, if it were subtraction, what are known as corresponding elements. And what that means is, so if we go to these two matrices, we're going to look at the two elements on the top left corners, negative 5 and 5. We write a new matrix that's its sum, and we just put in the top left corner, negative 5 plus 5, which is 0. We'll do that to every other element. So we do 3 plus negative 4, and that gets me negative 1 for the top right. Bottom left is 1 plus 2, which is 3. And bottom right is negative 4 plus 5, which is 1. It's just that simple to add two matrices. All right, we can do the same thing with subtraction now. So here are two row matrices, 5, negative 5, 6, minus negative 6, negative 6, negative 4. Okay, so what we're going to do here, same thing we did with the first example, except now we're going to subtract corresponding matrices. So I'm going to break this down a little bit further for you. So the first element is now 5 minus negative 6. The middle element is now negative 5 minus negative 6. And the third element is 6 minus negative 4. Why did I do this? Because subtraction, especially when you're doing subtraction with negative numbers, can get a little tricky. So... 5 minus negative 6, plus plus, that's 11. We'll do the same thing with the next two elements. We'll do the plus plus for the middle, and that becomes 1. And plus plus for 6 plus 4 is now 10. So 11, 1, 10 is my difference matrix. Let's look at one more example, and this one looks a little different than the other ones. So you've got this matrix negative 3, 4, 1, 0, 3, 4, and you're going to add to it just a column matrix, negative 4, 0. So there's some things that should jump out at you, okay? Especially if we're talking about the idea of adding corresponding, matri or corresponding elements or subtracting corresponding elements. Look at the dimensions of these two matrices. Remember, dimensions are the number of rows by the number of columns. So the first matrix has three rows and two columns, so it's a 3 by 2. The second matrix, I kind of gave it away because I told you it was a column matrix, it's got two rows and one column, which is two by one. Do you notice that the dimensions are not the same? Obviously you can tell that visually, but I wrote them down there as well for your reference. So here's the trick with adding and subtracting matrices. If the two matrices have different sizes, then clearly we're not going to have corresponding elements. So for a problem like this, we'd have to write that it is undefined because the matrices have different dimensions. Okay, That's a big difference between addition and subtraction of numbers and polynomials to addition and subtraction of matrices. Okay, We would never be able to necessarily say that 2 plus 8 is an undefined value or 110 plus 15 is undefined. However, you can add or subtract two matrices or at least attempt to add or subtract two matrices, and have an undefined result because of the difference in dimensions. That's going to happen with many of the operations we look at in this chapter. This is just the start of that, but more to come. Okay, at this point, you have some practice problems on the note sheet, just like these, addition and subtraction. Pause the video, give them a try, and 
move on and we'll look at the second operation in this section, which is scalar multiplication. Okay, welcome back. We're going to look at scalar multiplication now. And I told you that there are two different kinds of multiplication when you're talking about matrices. In section 4.2, we're going to look at this thing called scalar multiplication. And what I mean by scalar multiplication is I mean we're multiplying a matrix by some number. That's basically what a scalar is in comparison to a matrix, which is this thing that has a bunch of numbers in it. Okay, and if you look at the examples that we have, there are a couple examples showing you what that means and what that would look like. So example four that I just wrote over, we've got four, this big number four on the outside of a matrix, a two by three matrix, one, five, zero, five, six, negative three. So if you're going to multiply a scalar times a matrix, okay, remember this is the scalar. Essentially, all you are doing is you're basically treating this like the distributive property. You're going to multiply every element by 4 and rewrite the matrix, basically multiplying all the numbers by 4. So 4 times 1 is 4, 5 times 4 is 20, 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 5 is 20, 4 times 6 is 24, and 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. That's all there is to it for scalar multiplication. We'll look at one more example, and then I think you can do the rest on your own. So we have 4 times a column or a row matrix of 3, 2, 5. And I kind of gave it away there a little bit, but you distribute. 4 times 3 gets you the 12. 4 times 2 gets you the 8. And then 4 times 5 will get you... 20. That's all there is to it, okay? The second type of multiplication is what's going to come up in section 4.3, and that is when you multiply one matrix times another matrix. That's probably the trickiest operation. That's why we're not including it in this section. For right now, addition, subtraction, and scalar multiplication should be enough to get your feet wet with working with different matrices and doing some different matrix operations. With that being said, there's a couple more practice problems from the notes that I want you to try on scalar multiplication. Give them a go. We'll talk about all these in class. We'll answer any questions you had from this video, but I think you should find this to be pretty straightforward. Um, tomorrow, we'll look at some more challenging examples. We'll throw in some calculator stuff, because your calculator, whether you have the Inspire or you have an 84, does a beautiful job with doing a lot of these for you, and that'll be helpful when we get to some more complicated things down the road, being able to do the basic stuff with technology. With that, I wish you a good evening, and I will see you tomorrow in class.